Hi friends, do you like my new axe? No, it's not a guitar. It's a leaf blower, a battery powered leaf blower. And if you saw my driveway in the photo right before the video started, you can see it looks beautiful even though my driveway is completely under oak trees. So what? <laughs> You're probably wondering. I recently invested in that and they've really come down in price. So I am not ashamed to have bought a battery powered leaf blower because it is light. It is super light and I can actually carry it. Um, not sure if I've mentioned before, uh, I do have a, a digestive disorder, if you will, and it makes me malnutrition most of the time. So I can get weak and worn out pretty easily. My muscles, mm, not there. So I need some aids to help me. And those aids I choose to use are a little battery powered weed whacker and a leaf blower. They only weigh a couple pounds each and I can recharge the battery and use them again and again. In fact, I have several batteries so I can just swap them out and keep going. The point of that is it saves me time that I need to do with my family. So I have a weakness and that weakness is a physical weakness. I used to try and get out there through the course of the day to get all those acorns and leaves off. And if you're wondering, it's a steep driveway. So acorns and wet leaves make it super dangerous for people to walk or drive on. So I need to get out there and get it. And later in the year, I'll need to be out there shoveling, right? I haven't come up with a super great tip for that. Normally I go sideways. So I don't use a machine for that. Um, actually, <laughs> the, the snowblower is too heavy. So I, I, but I have methods for doing things, right? We have ways to combat our weaknesses. And we have to discern the correct tool for that. So for a long time, I was using a, the gas powered weed whacker, right? Too heavy for me and I can't even start the thing. So that did not work. Then I went to an electric one where I have to use this giant cord, right? And I have to empty the bag every now and then if I want to mulch it. And if I'm trying to blow it, it's still like this huge weight. And this is my bad shoulder too. So uh, that didn't work so well either. The broom, for some reason, my broom handle is always ongoing. And um, it just wears me out, honestly. And then when now we have, you know, my son's a driver too. So there's multiple cars in the driveway. So you can't really sweep under them. So that's why the blower really does better there. You can't be like, okay, you need to move your car every day so I can do this. You know, at the time I want you to move it and that'd be inconveniencing others. So I'm trying to, I had discerned that this was the way and I just went and finally did it. But I discerned this for nearly a year before I did it. I won't lie, I did. Um, and I cut back on some other things so I didn't feel so guilty about getting it. And we do that in our everyday life, right? We, there's only so many hours of the day, whether you're a homeschooling mom or your kids are in public school or you're a working mom maybe you don't even have kids but maybe you're an aunt who likes to spend time with kids or maybe you like to spend your time with friends or doing charity work and you need to fit a little bit more in your day so you're going to discern some tools that are going to make your life easier or maybe your weakness is um teaching doctrine to your kids right i mentioned before i'm from the post vatican II age and um, I love the nuns and what was more inspiring to me was their personal stories of why they chose to be brides of Christ. I honestly don't remember anything from the workbooks that we did. Um, I wish I, I, I was teasing with Linda the other day about the, the older generation, the one above me, that you can say lines, questions from the Baltimore Catechism and they'll give you answers. And it's a fun thing to do with them. But I'm also kind of jealous because I wish I knew the Catechism that well, right? So I am kind of jealous of them for that. And so that was my weakness. And what I did was I found this wonderful program for schooling him. It's a distance education school called Mother of Divine Grace. And they have already discerned wonderful books to use. And some of them you're like, that's from the 1930s. Oh my goodness, Father Lowe books. When you read them, you're like, oh. Yes, because he is the perfect resource. So sometimes it's tempting to use resources that other people are using, whether they are Catholic or Christian. Um, and is there a difference? There's a small difference in doctrine, right? Depending on the doctrine, there are differences. So it would have been easier when my kid was young to let him watch the produce-based videos that are very popular. Um, and across the board in Christianity, I feel that they're across the board popular with everyone. But I watched one once and I was like, that's not 
not exactly true. So there are some nuances to them that don't necessarily fit Catholic doctrine, and they're not huge when they're little, but that's going to be in their brain. And so when they get older, they're going to say, well, why do I have to do that? They said in that cartoon I watched that I don't, and they might not remember it was the cartoon. They just might remember that when I was young, you taught me that I didn't have to do that. Um, or that I did have to do something. And so is that something you want to do? Are you accidentally um, teaching your kids a different faith tradition? That's something to really discern about because it's easy. It's popular. Um, you think you, know, you think it's ecumenical. And maybe some of them are okay. So maybe go ahead and watch one and make sure you're 100% on board with it. And if you don't know your catechism first, we've been talking about the catechism a lot. Those are the teachings of the church. And at some point they wrote them down, right? And the catechism is beautiful because it gives you the scriptural references where they came from. Um, and if the church fathers discuss them at all, they try and link those. So they, they're giving you all those great resources so you know what they're saying and why they're saying it. So you watch your video, look it up if you're not sure in the catechism or study the catechism, get strong in your faith so that you can discern those things for your kids. Because if not, you're accidentally evangelizing your kids for someone else. I don't think anybody means to do that. So my friends, I know you want to save time and I know you want to Right, you want to find something that fills in your weaknesses. So you, it's tempting. Um, one great one that we found when my son was young was called, I believe it was Francesco's Friendly World. And it was an animated version of St. Francis. And also, no, he didn't probably live in the church at San Damiano with a wolf, a bear, uh, a little bird, and a raccoon. Um, but I think the kids know that that didn't really happen. <laughs> as opposed to a doctrinal er error. And then also you can buy different movies. If you're worried about that, you can buy different movies that incrementally get them to an adult understanding of St. Francis or Franciscan teaching. Um, and so maybe you start out with that one video that I was talking about, but then you up your game. You get a little bit more nuanced each time you get to a teaching. That's another great way to teach the theology of the body, which was the teaching of St. John Paul II. He did it on his Wednesday general audiences over several years. Um, it's all scripturally based. It is. It's not like he made something he made up is what I'm trying to say. It is the Catholic teaching of the body. We are body and soul, right? Um, and so how do we address that? We don't address it with yoga. That's what we don't do. Um, and that's not what we mean by that, but you do have to be aware of your body, why God made your body, right? And how he intended for you to use it. And a way to do that is with theology of the body. So I encourage you to study them. Um, he did them as general audiences. They're available in book form. You can find it on the Vatican website. Again, if English is not your first language or you're just better in another language, <laughs> or you happen to know Latin, go ahead and read it in those languages. You can get that from the Vatican website. I'm sure publishers have it in any, almost any language you want. So go ahead and start studying it. Um, Christopher West is, is probably the most well-known expert on it. And Sister Helena, I think she's the Theology of the Body and the Media Nun. And I believe she's with Pauline Press. She has a lot of great works. And so you can find an adapted remember i said about working your way up the levels nuances nuances so you can find a version of this for kids and then you find can find one for teens and they do break it down for girls and for boys um some of them and then you can keep going and getting to older ones and some of the adult teens um i think they've gone older older teens have gone on the retreat version or you know the, the one with the speaker and so you can do all those things so Yes, we are all about saving times, being smarter, but make sure you're doing sound things. So discern that if you need good resources um, for tools, I recommend a hardware or home improvement store, right? For your soul, I recommend Catholic resources. Um, and if you need some help finding them, let me know. I'll try and, I'm trying to use this blog to get them out there to you because there are so many great ones. So don't forget, for Theology of the Body, absolutely Christopher West, and I believe it's Pauline Press with Sister Helena. Is it Sister Helen Burns? Not 100% on that. 
<laughs> um, so give it a look. You will learn to find um, even which Catholic resources really are just amazing. There's also a great way to find a lot of these in the sampler form is, have you ever seen those booths at the back of your church that have the discount books that are only like, what are they? Books are $5 donation and CDs are a dollar donation. Take advantage of those. You may, you know, invest just a little bit of money and find an author you fall in love with. And if they don't have them at a discount price, you can often find them other places, right? You can go out to the main publisher and find those resources. So that's just a great way to get a sampler. I am praying for you, friends, and I'm just hoping that you discern how can we spend our time better, smarter, and bring our families to God, right? And we better bring society with us. We're going to build a strong foundation and restore society. And we do it one child, one family at a time. So friends, I am praying for you. This is Deanna from our Blooming Catholic Life. And I hope that you are here to grow with me. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe, ring that little bell. Yeah, I still don't know where it is when you look at it. And please feel free to share this on social media. And if you've got any great show notes for us, maybe you know the names of some of those great books that you love, put them down there. Share them with others in the comment section, right? Okay. Thanks, friends. I'm praying for you.